So I'm gonna go into the source folder and then press M to bring that menu and I want to add another folder. So this folder is gonna be the config folder. I'm gonna do config and then the forward slash and then inside of this config folder, I'm gonna add another file and that's gonna be the MySQL configuration. So we're gonna pass in the host name, username and password and things like that so that we can create a connection to the database. So I'm gonna call it mysql.config.js. And then if I expand this, you can see now we have this file so that you can see it. So MySQL config.js, and then I'm gonna go inside of this file and then we're gonna put in our configuration. So the first thing we need to do is to add in some imports. So I'm gonna do import MySQL and then we're gonna import that from MySQL. And that's the package that we imported when we created the application. And then I also need to load the environment variables. So I'm gonna do that env and then we're gonna get that from that env as well. So now uh, let's just load everything. So that env that config, that's gonna load any configuration that we have. And then what I want to do is instead of creating a connection, I'm gonna go ahead and create a pool of connection. So we're gonna create this pool of connection and then every time there's a request that comes into the application, we're gonna look into that pool and grab an open connection and then perform the database query and then release that connection in the pool or back in the pool. So to do this, I'm gonna create a constant and I'm gonna call it pool. So that's gonna contain all of the um, database connection and then we're gonna use the MySQL and then we're gonna do create pool. Okay, so that's gonna create a pool and we're gonna pass in some configuration inside of this. So I'm gonna go in here and then open and close scalar braces. Actually, I'm gonna move this up here and then paste this down and see if I can move this up here as well. So now we can put all of our configuration for this here. The first thing we need is the host. So we need to pass in the host, so the URL of the database. And we're gonna do process.env. I'm gonna create another variable on the process and I'm gonna call it db underscore host. So that's gonna be the host. And then I'm gonna pass in the port. So the port again, I'm gonna copy all these lines and then come down and paste it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to db and underscore port. So that's gonna be the port of the database. And then I'm just gonna paste this a few times. The next thing I need is the user. So I'm gonna say user, and then we're gonna do db and then do user and then copy this again, paste it a few more time. And next thing I need is the password. So we're gonna say password. So that's gonna be the password. And then again, we're gonna change that to, let's do db underscore uh, password. Okay, so those are environment variable that we're gonna be passing. And because we defined them in the process, we'll be able to pass them in many different ways. And then the next thing I need is the database. So the actual database name to connect to. So I'm gonna do database and I'm gonna change this again to DB and then pass in the name here. So that's gonna be the database name. So I'm just gonna name it name. So uh, the database name is gonna be the database. And then the last thing I wanna add is the connection limit. So I'm gonna do connection limit. So that's gonna tell us how many connections that we can have in this pool. So this is gonna depend on the application that you're building and how often uh, requests are gonna be made to it. This is really something that you have to think about on a case by case basis. And then here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just change this to connection underscore limit. Okay, so because we're defining everything from the process, we'll be able to pass those in. So it, it becomes a little bit more dynamic because we're not gonna be stuck with some hard-coded values that we're passing in here. We can pass those in at any given moment whenever we're spinning up the application. And then another thing I wanna do is to in export this. So I'm gonna come down here and say export default and we wanna export the pool. Another property that we can pass in here that could be important is the queue limit. Because whenever you create this pool, it's gonna create, I don't know what the number is gonna be, but it's gonna use some default number for a queue that is gonna keep whenever there's connections that is hanging. And what I mean by that is, for example, if this connection limit that I'm setting up here, let's say I set this to five connections. And then let's say the application is so busy, all these five connections on the pool are being held by some processes. So there are so many different requests coming into the application 
and I've defined five connection limit in the pool, which means I have five connections to the database in the pool and all these five connections are being used. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take all these other requests to get a connection from the pool and it's going to put them in a queue. So you can also define the limit of the queue that you want. So for example, if you define 10, then if all of your five connections in the pool are being held by some processes because, you know, they're making some changes to the database, then if you pass that limit that you set in the queue, then it's going to give you an error. So that's something that you might consider using whenever you're, you know, creating the configuration for the pool. You can define the queue limit, which means the number of requests for a connection to keep in the queue if all the connections that you created or you define with the connection limit are being used. But in my case, um, I don't think I'm going to need it. So for this database connection, let's say I'm going to set it to like some number that's a little bit high, like 10 or something. So I don't think at any given moment, all these 10 connections are going to be in use. And then if there is another request to get a connection from the pool, then it's going to be queued. I don't think that's going to happen to me because, you know, these processes in the database are very fast. Like when you're updating something in a database, it happens really, really fast. But it's really something to consider if you're, you know, dealing with very large amount of data and you have a, a lot of requests coming into the application. I just wanted to mention that. So this is our configuration. And whenever we need to connect to the database, then we're just going to call this pool and then get a connection from the pool and then run the query there.